Uh, Giles, is it a conspiracy to say that these people are all sort of conspiring to, to, to reach ends that aren't just about pay and conditions? Well, they obviously have the basic public motive, which is supporting their workers in the current dispute about pay and conditions. Um, if that was all that they were doing or all that their record showed they believed they wanted, then I think it would be a different matter. But uh, people have forgotten, as you so rightly say, uh, some of the past history of the British left. And if you look at the collective leadership of the RMT, they are substantially and overwhelmingly extreme Marxists. The evidence is there quite clearly. Their president... Uh, Alex Gordon uh, is on the executive of the Communist Party of Britain. He's, uh, he's treated Happy Birthday Lenin. He's given speeches alongside Marx's tomb. He has said, and these are the crucial bits, he said that he wants to replace our current market economy with a socialist order of society. The guy who was the number two uh, standing against Mick Lynch, Steve Headley, their former assistant general secretary, has said exactly the same. They want to overthrow capitalism and create a socialist form of society. And their current assistant uh, general secretary, Eddie Dempsey, has said that they are trying to create a culture of civil disobedience. That's revolution, right? Civil disobedience in the country. On top of the fact that they've been off to Ukraine and <laughs> expressed their support for the pro-Putin mob out there, who we now see are rapists and murderers. Uh, and so it goes on. As you look through the leadership, this is the consistent uh, pattern that they have. Um, and the far left's uh, big triumph has been to trumpet the fact that they want socialism without actually being in any way specific about what they mean. But if you dig deeper, a really disturbing picture emerges. Now, the, the manifesto of the Communist Party of Britain, right, the party that mm. their RMT president is on the executive leadership of, right, leadership, um, you read their manifesto, it's extraordinary. They want mass nationalisation without compensation, that means the utilities, railways, bus, road haulage, construction, engineering, banks. But it's right down to the aviation industry, estate and advertising mm. agencies, luxury hotels, even second homes without compensation. They want the purges of the... I'm quoting directly from their material here. It sounds so extreme you wouldn't believe it. Purges of the leadership of the police, the courts, diplomatic service and the army and their their replacement by people sympathetic to the revolution and then mm. and then uh, the political education of the lower ranks to be um to be taken on by trade unionists uh, and mm. then um, the abolition of the monarchy but the replacement the replacement of the police by a people's militia <sighs> trained by trades unionists that's armed trades unionists i mean this is fantasy politics but they're very, very serious about it. These are the descendants of the people who tried to take over the Labour Party from Neil Kinnock. They're the people who backed Jeremy Corbyn, who did, with, together with his associates, he did want a communist revolution. And I think when people say, as they do often interviewing RMT leaders, are you a Marxist? It's not sufficient to stop there. You have to ask, what does that mean? And if they've got these ulterior long-term motives, you've mm. got to question quite what they really are after. And they've made it clear in their own quotes. It's very clear that some of these people at the top of these organisations are committed Marxists, communists, very extreme people. Uh, but I suppose when it comes to the ordinary members of these organisations, the people who are actually withdrawing their labour over these weeks and indeed perhaps months, uh, they aren't the same sort of militant uh, left-wing agitators that the leadership is. Uh, I suppose when it comes to what people in the country think of these organisations, they're not going to look so much at the executive of the RMT and how many uh, members of the Communist Party. They're going to look at the, the sort of uh, normal members who are withdrawing their labour. Should we be looking more at the leadership? Should we be applying more scrutiny to the politics of this? 
Um, of, of course, as you're as from what I said, with all these extreme, crazy ideas that they subscribe to. Yes, I absolutely think we should. I mean, they the, the leadership of some of these unions are working straight out of the Marxist playbook. By playbook, I mean what Marx and Lenin have said. They believed firmly that it was the duty of the educated revolutionary elite to activate the workers, to educate the workers in order to be able to use the workers for the revolution. But they saw a clear mm. distinction between them as the them as the educated revolutionaries who understood mm. their theory um, as opposed to the ordinary members. Uh, mm. they, they want to be able to mobilize. Uh, they want to be able to create. Um, uh, they want to be able to create a, a sense of anger and mm. conflict. Uh, you know, I mean, Marx. But, but how, how far? How far 